I'm Anil Kumar and now let us discuss at length about compound angle formula and its application in solving some questions. In part one, I'll start with the compound angle formula, derive double angle formula and solve these four questions. In part two, we'll concentrate more on half angle formula. You can always pause the video, copy these questions, work on them and then look into my suggestions. Now let's begin by compound angle formula. Basically, we'll work with sine A plus B. So sum of two angles, which is sine A cos B plus cos A sine B. Right? Now, if we are looking for difference of A and B, that is, if the formula is A minus B, in that case, it is minus. So take it as a review. We are not going to derive this formula, but from this formula, we'll derive the formula for double angle. Similarly, for cosine, cos A plus B can be written as cos A cos B minus sine A sine B. So these are two compound angle formulas with which we'll work. We'll leave tan A plus B for the time being. In case we are working on A minus B, we get plus here. So these are two important formulas with which we'll work for the time being. We'll take up tan A plus B formulas in part two when we discuss some test questions. So we'll concentrate more on tan A plus B formula. So now let's begin with understanding compound angle formula and deriving other useful formulas from there. So let's begin with sine A plus B, the formula which I just wrote. It is sine A cos B plus cos A sine B. And what is sine A minus B? Sine A minus B is sine A cos B minus cos A sine B. Okay. If we add these two, that is to say, if I do sine A plus B plus sine A minus B, in that case, these two terms will cancel out and we get here 2 sine A cos B, right? 2 sine A cos B. Now, similarly, if we work with cosine formula, which is cos A plus B equals to cos A cos B minus sine A sine B and cos A minus B is equal to cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. In this case, if we add them, what do we get? If we add cos A plus B with cos of a minus B, what we get is 2 times cos A cos B, right? And if you subtract, that is to say, if I do cos A plus B minus cos of A minus B, we get minus 2 times sine A sine B, correct? Now, from these formulas, if we make a small substitution, that is to say, let me show you here for one of these, and then I'll leave the rest for you. If we make a substitution that if A is equal to x plus y over 2, and if B is equal to x minus y over 2, then what is a plus b equals to? So if you add these two, 
minus y plus y cancel out you get 2x over 2 right you get 2x over 2 which is which is x correct and if you subtract them which is a minus b in that case you actually get 2y over 2 which is y so what i'm trying to say here is if i make a substitution here replacing a with x plus y over 2 i get 2 times sine x plus y over 2 times cos b is x minus y x minus y over 2 is equal to and what is a plus b a plus b is x i could write this as sine x plus sine y do you see that so immediately from this particular formula we have converted into an equation which is sine x plus sine y equals to twice sine x plus y by 2 cos x minus y by 2 you get an idea right now based on this we if we take minus here then we get sine of x minus sine of y will be equal to what basically we are subtracting this from the other one so if you subtract these cancel but you get twice cos a right so which is cos of a and a is x plus y by 2 and sine of b which is x minus y by 2 Do you get it? So what we get from these sum and difference formulas are other formulas which are very useful and we call them. So what we have converted, we have converted sum or difference into product. Do you see that? So it is converting sum or difference to product form. you see that now here you could apply the same thing replacing a plus b by x what do we get we get cos x plus cos y equals to two times cos of a a is x plus y by 2 x plus y by 2 and cos of x minus y by 2 or the next formula which you could write cos x minus cos y equals to minus twice sine x plus y by 2 or sine x minus y by 2 now these are very important formulas which can be utilized in solving many questions right so in a way we have done a part of our question which we wanted to do that is we have solved question number two in doing so sine x minus sine y equals to two, two times cos x plus y over two times sine x minus y by two so not only we have done question number two which you can clearly see here but we have also derived similar formulas correct now let's move on and try to solve some of our questions as I solve these questions we'll also see how we applied our formulas correct so that's the beauty of this part so I'll be like going back and forth to our compound angle formulas so that they register in your mind now we need to find exact value of sine 11 pi by 12 now when we say sine 11 pi by 12 let's look into the position of this 11 pi by 12 that really means that this pi has been divided into 12 portions and we are almost at the end and this is what we are saying is 11 pi by 12 clearly 
the acute angle here is pi by 12, right? Sine is positive here, you know, all are positive in quadrant 1. Sine is positive in quadrant 2, tan in 3, and cosine in 4. Therefore, we can write sine 11 pi by 12 as equal to sine pi minus, so 12 pi by 12 is pi, correct? The acute angle is pi by 12. It is pi minus pi by 12, correct? Now, that could be written as sine pi by 12, correct? So basically, sine 11 pi by 12 is sine pi by 12, perfect? So now we need to find the exact value for sine pi by 12. So sine pi by 12, let me rewrite, sine pi by 12 could be written as, as combination of, write this as, a, well, sine pi by 4 minus pi by 6, correct? pi by 12 could be written as sine pi by 4 minus pi by 6. And now we can apply the compound angle formula which is sine a minus b. Sine a minus b is sine a cos b minus cos a sine b. So at this stage we can say that this is equal to sine a a is pi by 4 cos pi by 6 minus cos pi by 4 sine pi by 6. To get the values for pi by 4 and pi by 6, we can use our special triangles. So let's say this is the special triangle for pi by 4 and this is for pi by 6. So when we're talking about pi by 4, the sides are 1, 1 square root 2. And for pi by 6, I prefer to write pi by 6 here, it is 1, 2 square root 3, right? So from here we can get the exact values. So we can write those values as sine pi by 4 is 1 over square root 2. 1 over square root 2, cos pi by 6. You will see from this side, cos is adjacent side, square root 3 over 2. So it is square root 3 over 2 minus cos pi by 4, 1 over square root 2. And sine pi by 6 is 1 over 2. We can take common denominator of 2 square root 2 and get in the numerator square root 3 minus 1. It is always a good practice to rationalize. So we'll rationalize this. So we have 2 square root 2. Rationalize means multiply and divide by square root 2, right? So that gives us square root 6 minus square root 2 divided by that is 4, right? So you could write in this form or you could write that as you wish. So both are the correct answers. Is it okay? So for the time being, we'll write down that sine 11 pi by 12 is equal to square root 3 minus 1 over 2 square root 2. Okay. Now let's do the next question. Now this particular question we just derived. I would like you to pause the video, do it yourself. Okay, so let us redo this question. So we started with, we want sine x minus y equals to 2 times cos x plus y divided by 2, sine x minus y divided by 2. So we started with sine a plus b, which is equal to sine a cos b plus 
cos a sin b we'll also take up what is sin a minus b equals to it is sin a cos b minus cos a sin b correct now if i do sine we we want minus in between right so sine a plus b minus sine a minus b that is to say we are considering these two equations and just doing minus here right in that case these two terms will cancel off and what we will finally get is twice cos a sine b Now look at what we need. We need x plus y over 2 instead of a. So we are going to make a substitution. And the substitution here is that x plus y by 2, let it be equal to a. And x minus y by 2, let it be equal to b. So that is what we have made a substitution. Now, if I do a plus b, what do I get? If I add these two, I get x plus y by 2 plus x minus y by 2. So that gives me 2x plus y, x plus x minus y, which is 2x by 2, which is x. Correct? So a plus b is x for us. And what is a minus b? will be x plus y by 2 minus x minus y by 2. That gives us x plus y minus x plus y over 2, which is 2y over 2 or y. And therefore, we can make a substitution. For a plus b, we can write x. So a plus b is x for us. For a minus b, we can write y. And for a and b, we have taken half of the sum. So we can now substitute what we have got here into our equation, getting the result. So the result is sine x minus sine y equals to twice cos of a, which is x plus y over 2, times sine of x minus y over 2. So last time I did it kind of hurriedly, and now I hope you understand how we did the substitution and got our result. So I'd like you to do this question for twice sine a plus b and cos a plus b and the other three formulas, okay? Now let's take up question number three. Now question number three here is cos x is equals to two over three and we need to find what cos four x is. To get to cos 4x, we'll actually start with some derivation. So we know cos a plus b is equal to cos a cos b minus sine a sine b, right? Now if I substitute b as equal to a, then what do we get? We get cos a plus a equals to cos a cos a minus sine a sine a. Now cos a cos a is cos 2a, correct? So we get a double angle formula, which is cos square a minus sine square a. Now that is a double angle formula. So what we have done is derived double angle formula. Now, in this formula, if I make a substitution as sine square a is 1 minus cos square a, correct? So if I do this substitution here, what do I get? I get cos 2a equals to cos square a minus 1 minus cos square a, which gives me 2 cos square a minus 1. So we get cos 2a equals to 2 cos square a minus 1. Do you get it? Now we need what cos 
4 is correct we need what cos 4x is so we can use the same formula double it up you get an idea right and we can actually find the value of cos 4x using cos x equals to 2 over 3 correct let me go one more step here just to derive another formula which relates cos 2a with sine uh, sine square a now i could have done a substitution saying cos square a equals to 1 minus sine square a in that case let's get back to this now in that case i could have got cos 2a as equals to 1 minus 2 sine square a correct so so these are important formulas so we have basically three formulas for cos 2a i mean yes let me do it like this now do you see these three formulas one relates cos 2a with cos square a and sine square a the other one with cos square a and the third one is with sine square a all these three formulas are very important and they are easy to derive just as we saw here now actually we will solve the question right so the question here is to find what is cos 4x is so we'll begin by writing cos 4x as equal to so we'll write in terms we'll use this formula we'll use this formula so 4x will be so we are replacing 2a with double right so we can write this as 2 times cos square of 2a minus 1 do you realize so replacing 2a i should write 2x right okay replacing 2a with 2x a with 2x so what i've done here is i substituted a as equals to 2x in this formula so a equals to 2x so this becomes 2 cos square 2x and that becomes cos 4x got it now let's continue we can write this as equal to cos square 2x not 2x is like 2a we could write in this form so it is twice will square cos 2x cos 2x is 2 times cos square x minus 1 whole square minus 1 do you get it so we have now used this formula right so let me rewrite this with the values given to us cos x is 2 over 3 so we can substitute 2 over 3 so we get 2 times 2 times 2 over 3 whole square minus 1 whole square minus 1 got it and now that gives us 2 times let me use square brackets so here we have 2 times 2 square is 4 over 9 minus 1 correct and all this is squared minus 1 so which gives us 2 times it is 8 minus let me write here 8 over 9 minus 1 whole square minus 1 and that gives me 2 times 8 minus 9 over 9 whole square minus 1 and that is 2 times that is just 1 right 1 over 81 minus 1 do you get it so so it is 2 over 81 minus 1 which could be written as 2 minus 81 over 81 and now 2 minus 81 79 we get minus 79 over 81 correct so that gives us the the value for cos 4x so we can now write down our answer which is cos 4x is equal to minus 79 over 81 so I'd like you to go through these steps and understand how we got our answer. So we applied this double angle formula twice. And in this part of the video, we actually derived 
three different formulas for cos 2a. All right. Now we'll take the next question. Now we just derived formula for cos 2x and we also calculated the value of for cos 4x. Now we have a question here. We need to show that sine of 4x divided by 1 minus cos 4x times 1 minus cos 2x divided by cos 2x is equal to tan x. So we need to know double angle formula for sine x also. So let us derive that first. So we know sine a plus b is equal to sine a cos b plus cos a sine b, correct? Now if I substitute b as equal to a, we get sine a plus a equals to sine a cos a plus cos a sine a or sine of 2a is equal to twice sine a cos a. Now this is the double angle formula for sine. Previously, we derived three formulas for cosine, right? Let me rewrite them. We say cos 2a is equals to cos square a minus sine square a. We also found that this could be written as 2 times cos square a minus 1. And also, it could be written as 1 minus 2 sine square a, correct? So these are the three formulas which we did in the last section. You can always go back to it and then see how we got those results. So in this particular video, I'm trying to get back to compound angle formula a couple of times so that it kind of registers and that becomes a good review for you. Now let's look into this question. We have sine 4x. Let's rewrite the question now. The question here is, uh, let's write down the left side is equals to sine 4x divided by 1 minus cos 4x times 1 minus cos 2x divided by cos 2x. So we'll start with the left side and try to show it as equal to tan x. So we'll apply the cos double angle formula. So sine 4x could be written as twice sine of 2x cos 2x, perfect, divided by 1 minus. Now, since it is 1 minus, it is good to use the formula 1 minus 2 sine square x with double angle, so that 1 and 1 cancel out. So there is always an option of using any one of these. So best to use will be for cos 4x. We'll use this one, which is 1 minus twice sine square 2x. Right? So instead of, I mean, you know, 4x twice, it makes sense. And on this side, 1 minus cos 2x, same strategy. We have to get rid of this 1. So we'll use 1 minus 2 sine square x. We'll use 1 minus 2 sine square x. And in the denominator, we have cos 2x. I'm sorry, this was cos 2x. Sine 2x cos 2x. Since we have a cos 2x here, it's better to just keep it as cos 2x. Does it make sense to you? So this cos 2x and cos 2x will cancel out. That's the whole idea. Now, we could write numerator as 2 times sine 2x and the denominator. 1 minus 1 is 0. Minus and minus makes it plus. So we get 2 sine square 2x. Here, 1 and 1 cancel. Minus makes it plus. So we get 2 sine square x, not 2x, just x. Now, one of these 
sine square 2x cancel with with the square term and therefore I could write this term as equal to and 2 and 2 also cancels correct 2 and 2 also cancels so what we have here is 2 sine square x divided by sine 2x now what is sine 2x so we have 2 sine square x divided by sine 2x is twice sine x cos x now you can cancel these twos and one of the signs you're left with sine x over cos x which is indeed tan x which is the right side do you see that so that is how you can actually prove what you wanted to product of these two is tan x so what we did here was we again derived the formulas for sine double angle for sine and cosine brought them back replaced 4x with 2x combinations simplified and got a result so that is how you could actually apply these comp compound angle formulas and solve some identities so i hope with this you have fairly good knowledge about how to work with compound angle formulas in part two we'll concentrate more on half angle formulas and we'll take examples with double and half angle formulas for tan i hope you find it interesting and useful feel free to write your comments share my videos and if you like and subscribe that'll be even better Thank you and all the best.